Uh, my name is Jeff Wilson. I am a Senior Research Director, Cybersecurity Technology at IHS Market, uh, formerly of Infinetics. A few of you probably know me or remember me um, from who knows what company you've all bounced around so much over the years. Um, for the next hour and 15 minutes, we're going to talk a little bit about security. And I have noticed that in almost every presentation it's come up, uh, we've sort of danced around the topic a little bit, haven't, haven't hit it head on. So uh, that's my plan today is talk specifically about how uh, moving to virtual networks impacts security and then how you can leverage security solutions to deliver new types of service in, in, in the virtual world. And we have, we have some panelists. I'm going to, I kind of split this up a little bit. I figured we'd change it in the afternoon. So I'm just going to talk for a few minutes and then I'm going to invite a pair of panelists up to focus on one topic and then we'll move on. Um, almost every single conversation I have about cybersecurity technology, uh, I, I can frame using this graphic and I've had different versions of it over the years. Um, any major movement that happens in cyber is driven by these four things. Um, and w what we're talking about at this conference is new architectures, right? This is all about uh, the, the new architecture of virtualized carrier networks. But that's really only one of the four things that really propels the cybersecurity technology market forward. The first is the threats. And what is it this week? What was it last week? Equifax. Um, the breaches are a result of new techniques, uh, investment by attackers in going after new markets and new opportunities. Um, it's the one area of IT and networking that is largely driven in terms of technology innovation uh, in response to human ingenuity and not physics or math or anything else, right? So the battle that folks who build systems that identify and stop attacks are fighting, they're fighting a battle against other people and, and against the brains of those people. And so we have this never ending game of chase around in a circle where we catch up and then they get a little bit ahead and we catch up and then they, they pull ahead again. And that will never ever change. I, I, you can talk to me about artificial intelligence and machine learning all day. They'll use artificial intelligence and machine learning too and that will propel them ahead again in this endless chase. So obviously the threats themselves are one of the main things that drives the development of technology. Um, in the world that we live in, but really going back to the very beginning, the proliferation of devices uh, from, you know, massive workstations to desktops to laptops to ever smaller laptops to mobile phones to now any and every device with an electronic heartbeat. Um, I think we haven't even begun to understand what it's going to mean to provide security in a world with 7 trillion or 10 trillion or 70 trillion connected devices. I think even the brightest among us can't fathom what that really means. And the one example that I like to give is, um, you know, for years talking about denial of service attacks, I've liked to, I, and I'm not original, everyone uses the analogy of, um, of a freeway. And, you know, what if all of the sudden, Every car on the freeway was directed to the exit that you got off of 101 in order to get to this hotel. Four million cars, however many million cars are driving around the Bay Area right now. Obviously, that exit's going to get clogged up. And how long is it going to be before anyone can get through that exit to get on to whatever resource that they're trying to get to? That's a denial of service attack. In a world of connected autonomous cars, that analogy becomes a real attack scenario. So. And that's one of you know, millions of new potential attack scenarios that 10 years ago, the best futurists hadn't really even considered a possibility. So, so the threats are changing, the sheer number of devices available creating new surface, new targets, um, and, and also new devices. I mean, the first thing that happened with IoT, right, is we, we recruited them and turned them into bots. So it's not just that they can be exploited, it's that they can be used because they have compute power and connectivity to launch attacks. Um, the third thing, rationalizing defense. Because of security defense mechanisms evolving in response to attacks, what we've ended up with over the years is this stack of devices. One problem, one solution. Spam's a problem, you buy anti-spam. Viruses are a problem, you buy antivirus. 
And so if you're, uh, you know, uh, in a carrier network, in a data center, in an enterprise network, building out security solutions, you have 20 years of boxes and software tools and management systems and all stacked up on top of each other, not having any meaningful conversation, not orchestrated in any useful way in order to really provide a tight mesh of defense. And so there is a serious process right now and, and the folks that are gonna come up here can talk to you about how serious it is to really figure out how we can slim down to a protection mechanism or infrastructure that is connected, that is irrationalized, that provides complete visibility, that has one set of policies and management. And this move to new architectures, oddly enough, this move to virtualization is accelerating that because it's forcing the industry to create interfaces, open interfaces, standard interfaces for devices to talk to and fro for orchestration, so why not for every other part of the security conversation? And then finally, obviously, is, is the new architectures themselves. And in this case, I'm talking specifically about the move to virtualization. Um, you know, the, we don't, I'm, I'm gonna spend one minute on this. The, the move to the cloud happened, it's done. We don't even have to talk about it anymore. There are three main reasons, I think, scale, speed, and flexibility. There's one major drawback. Security is really, 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 really hard, right? So what have we done about it? Michael uses this slide all the time. I don't know if he uses it anymore. I stole it from him a long time ago. Um, if you look at a sort of a timeline of virtualization, um, going back to the very beginning days of, you know, a server in the wiring closet virtualized for who knows what use, testing, or to where we're looking at now, full network virtualization and service delivery, there have been a lot of stages. I personally have been tracking the sale and development of virtual appliances in the security space for a decade. So this is not a new conversation. This is a decade old conversation. And security is probably, I don't know, we could argue about it, but maybe the first commercial, the first commercialized VNF. Right, the, the first widely deployed, available, used, understood VNF. You know, the day after the first server was virtualized, someone said, I need a firewall that runs on this. And all of the firewall vendors went to work developing the VX version of whatever their off-the-shelf firewall was. And from that point, we, we've had a generation of virtual security appliances, SDN-enabled solutions, purpose-built virtualized security platforms, and now moving all of that to the massive scale orchestration and service chaining required to make security a working part of a much larger and tightly orchestrated virtualized network. So that's, that, that's, where, we're, that's where we're sitting now, but it's, it sits on top of a, of a generation, multiple generations of fairly mature products in some, in, in, not necessarily the case for other VNFs. So, I look at this as kind of, and you know, in the business services panel, obviously VCPE came up, um, but there's really two issues, and then with, within each of these two major areas, there's, there are sub-splits. Uh, but the first thing we're gonna talk about is VCPE. Um, it, it came up in the services panel, obviously, from a carrier's perspective. It's very um, interesting, the notion of putting some sort of generic box at the customer edge. Um, pushing services out to it, connecting them together, spinning them up, spinning them down, where they make sense. Obviously, this is, um, you know, the customers in some cases still want to have stuff on their prem, and security is one of those things that sometimes they like, are very comfortable keeping at the edge of the network, at, at their edge, not in a cloud or in the data center. Sometimes it's a requirement for regulatory reasons. Um, so there's a VCPE case that's interesting, and then obviously within the data center, whether it's a carrier data center, enterprise, or a, or a cloud data center, there are all kinds of applications for virtualized security. Um, and then even within that, there is what do we do in order to protect this new virtualized infrastructure, right? So we have to have one set of tools and practices in order to provide new types of protection when traffic is moving east-west. Protecting it is very different from traffic that's moving north-south. And then the second is, how do we then enable service delivery with virtualized platforms? Because security is one of the tools that does two jobs. It protects the carrier's environment and it also enables them to deliver revenue generating services. Mm -hmm.